friends and hello welcome to the September edition of the Let's Get Organized Craft Room Organization Hop. This month we are talking about 12 by 12 paper and um, paper pads. So how do we organize those? I did cover that a lot at the beginning when I talked about on another hop when I talked about organizing collections and the pieces that go with them because I tend to keep my paper and my collections um, all the little bits like together but not so this might sound a little bit redundant but hopefully not because that was at the beginning of the hop series so go back and check that out there will definitely be a link to the playlist for that somewhere in my link list at the bottom there's a link to all the other people who are hopping along and I really hope that you enjoy this hop and that you learn something I know I always do and I usually end up changing something around from what I have going on for my current my current process and I end up changing something after I watch all the videos. So here's what I've got so far. I really don't have a lot of paper and right now I really work a lot out of the collection although I do love to make my counterfeit kits. So those kits live in these kind of containers. See this one's empty because I haven't made one yet. I think that one's Christmas. So my counterfeit kit and things like that live in these containers and that's where I store my cart my paper in there. And then this is where the rest of my paper lives. It's a crate. I got it at Joann's. It's longer. I want to say it's like a legal length, but it's actually, and it's probably kind of bulging a little bit. Um, it's actually 12 by 12 across. It works really well to hold my 12 by 12 paper. Um, and I tend to sort my paper by designer and a little bit by collection. Um, I started actually labeling. I bought these sleeves on Amazon. Um, not too long ago after I think the paper the the hop we talked about collections um I did actually start labeling yay because it does help when you don't always see the um the zip strip or whatever the branding strip up at the top it's helpful to see those the the whatever it's called collection up there at the top but I haven't labeled them all and I do have a few paper pads from Vicki Booten I actually picked them up at Tuesday morning um, but unfortunately, her paper pads do not even have the name of the collection on them. And these are older and I don't know them off the top of my head. I think this one might be, oh yeah, it does say Color Study, doesn't it? So there it says Color Study. I don't need to label that one, but I did take them all apart and I sorted all the papers so that they are, the doubles are together and there's one from each side so I can see both sides in there. Um, I tend to just randomly grab when I'm trying to do my kits because I really love how her papers look solid but they aren't and so they add a lot of texture and funness to my to my pages um and then i have a few in here that were from when i was making albums or something else like here's celebrate from simple stories and here's some 11 these are in big bags because um they i have all the extra bits in there with those for some reason i don't know why i just decided to keep all that pe those pieces together i think just because there's so much that goes along with those collections the rest that's not labeled or sort, it's sorted by Pink Fresh and uh, Coco Vanilla and a little bit more simple stories back there in Maggie Holmes, but I haven't labeled that yet. So I'm going to take you up to the top of my desk where I have another project, that I, a second part of this project that you're going to help me with, and um, I'll be right back. Okay, so I do have some of my paper, the stuff that doesn't really fit in a collection anymore, and or I just don't really want to keep it with the collection anymore. I have those sorted out by like the type of design and the color. Um, it does, it's not a perfect process, but, um, so I have printed out my labels and some of these I'm going to trim. You know, when you print the labels, you get like a huge margin on either side. I, that's fine. Except that I got lazy and I said I wanted to print a whole bunch of them at the same time. So I decided I just, I, and they print very close together. So, oh darn. So, um, so yeah, I'm going to label these because sometimes when I'm looking through my my bucket down there I'm like what are these <laughs> like this one I thought it was blue because after this page these look a lot more blue but these are actually the greens because I have a, and I was really surprised I was like I only have that many green blues um I have a lot of blue but it turns out like I had a couple paper pads I think I had a one from Chamel um called um I don't know what it's called but and it was you know, I didn't want to keep it as a paper pad because her designs are very, um, they're not very like specific to the collection. They're very just kind of, kind of random. And same thing goes for Amy, um, or Amy Tangerine. Her designs are just very 
kind of random for one collection. Like she'll have peacocks and sewing machines in the same collection, right? So those are the kind of thing that I could just put in a in a theme kind of folder and or whatever these are called, sleeve. And these are, oh, I don't have one for yellow. No, these are dots. I was like, this is yellow. Nope, I, my all my yellows are pretty much in my, um, they're not in a yellow folder. They're in a folder based on the pattern. So it does, you kind of, you know, can wonder, well, how do you decide if you want to put it in the, you know, and based on what, what it is or what color it is. And I'm, I don't know. I just kind of, um, and I put one going the opposite direction on the back so that if I look at it from the back, I'll know what it is. That's how I know because I look at it and I'm like, that's not dots. No, dots are on the back. But um, I just tend to, I don't have, I don't really pull yellow paper. So I'm, I just look at that. Okay. Yeah, I know that's dots. Um, I have one that's stars, and of course the first thing on it is a big yellow piece of paper with stars. It's actually Vicky Boone. I did just debate if I wanted to take Vicky's and sort and, and divide hers up. And sometimes I do, um, like if it's really the last one. But for the most part, I keep it together because I really like just all the Vicky together. This one is neutral and ledger and uh, neutral and wood grain. You know, like natural, I, I probably meant to write natural on there and I put neutral, but um, any papers that kind of have a natural look to them, like I have one that kind of looks like the side of a wood, it's like metal siding. I think that's a Kaiser Craft. I love that one. I have this one that's papers, you know. I have this one that looks like crum crumpled craft paper. That one's really cool. This one, I don't know why that one's really in there. That one should probably go with the black. Although it's a neutral too, so. And it's just based on which, um, which here's that metal one it's kind of based on which design i like the best out of the two designs um this one it looks like paint kind of net neutral no i don't have it in my christmas because i had it in christmas and i didn't really like it also this side is very neutral so that's why i have that one under my neutrals this one is stripes this is a simple stories paper but it's stripes and I would probably pull it as a stripes before I said, oh, I really want to play with my emoji love paper because I don't. <laughs> I pulled this one for my uh, Christmas also. So stripes for that one. I have lots of different stripes. Oops, there's just tape, there's words. So see, lots of stripes. Yellow one's in there again. Here's a, here's a stars. I think the other stars for this one is actually still in the folder with the Vicky paper. So I would love to know how you sort your paper because I think I change my ideas every other week. I decide I, something's not really working. And like I said, I don't always choose to just pull paper based on, you know, I, I don't, I don't have a large collection right now. So I just kind of grab from what I've got. So it helps and it's easy to keep it organized this, at this small amount. This is fussy cuts and, and cut apart. So like this one, it's giant words. And I just figured this would be good for fussy cutting. I don't think I would use this as a background on a page. It's not how I, how I scrap. So knowing how I scrap, I think that would be really good. This would be really good for fussy cutting. All these different icons and designs, I think they would be really fun. I don't think, again, that I'm going to use that as a background on anything. I might. I like the cameras also, but I might also just cut the cameras out. You know, that's that's my tendency. And then anything that's like a cut apart paper. Um, these are all from Stamperia, which I, or Chowbella, which I don't um, have a separate box or collection for those because they're all just cut apart pieces. So this one's from a paper pad. So it helps me to just have those kind of in the same place. At one point I was um, cutting apart all my cut aparts and I have a box full of those too. But, um, but for this one, I think it just works to have them all in a folder. And then this one is like the ones that are just that beautiful large design and you just have no idea. Like how would I ever scrap this paper? I have no idea what I would use this for, but um, it's very pretty and I love it. I love the squirrels. It's like my favorite thing. This one is really pretty. Um, no idea. I would never use the plants. So I would love to figure out how to use that one. Here's another one. There aren't a whole lot. I have a couple that are like maps and star charts and stuff. 
And so, yeah, I just, I don't know how to use them, but I have them in a separate folder because someday I will do something to figure out how to do large, use large designs. And that's why I have them sorted like that. So that pretty much wraps up how I organize my uh, paper. Um, I have solid cardstock in a drawer over in my, I don't know why, but over in my um, container that I, or whatever it's called, tower of drawers that I have that go along with my um, ephemera and things, but I have just a drawer there for solids. Um, so there we go. That's what I do. I hope this helps and I hope that you decide that you want to do something like this. If you do, please leave me a comment. Let me know if you if you're new to my channel, please subscribe so that you can see more fun things that I do. I have a lot of different organizing videos. I have some craft room tours. Just go check those things out. And then um, of course, check out my other scrapbook videos. I hope that you'll come along and don't forget to go check out all the other people hopping along. Thank you so much for coming along today and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.